Brits, and welcome back to my channel. Firstly, my apologies for not posting any videos recently, but my laptop SSD crashed, and I've only recently managed to get a stable system up and running again. Now that's sorted, I look forward to bringing you videos a lot more regularly. So today we're looking at the topic of headphone calibration, and in particular headphone calibration to a Harman curve. Now I could go into a lot of detail on this, and there's a link in the description for further information if you want it, but all you really need to know is that it approximates the frequency response of quality speakers in an ideal room. In other words, it puts mixing with your headphones on a more equal footing to mixing with studio monitors. So let's say I want to apply an adjustment in my door that compensates for my headphones frequency response to closely match that Harman curve. As you may recognise, because every second YouTuber seems to have them, I'm using the Audio-Techno ATH M50X headphones. So bearing that in mind, I go to the Auto EQ GitHub page, for which the link is in the description. Now, Auto EQ is a great little piece of software, but we don't need it. Well, not directly. What we're actually after is their extensive database of headphone measurements and correction details. Once you've loaded the site, you want to head over to the Results folder link, which is where that database is stored. Now, all I have to do is find my ATHM50Xs. I scroll down to the right section and see that there are a few variants. My ones are just the stock earpads, so I click on that link. So that gives me a list of files, some parameters to make adjustments using either a graphical or a parametric EQ, and also a nice graph of the frequency response before and after adjustment as well as the target curve and so on. Now, I could set up an EQ plugin with those measurements, but there's a much easier and less error-prone way. So notice in the file list that there are wave files at both 44.1 and 48 kilohertz sample rates. And what they are is corrective impulse response files that perform the same function as the EQ adjustments. I use a standard sample rate of 48 kilohertz in my sessions, so I download the 48 kilohertz variant of the file ready for the next step. Make sure you move it to a safe place you won't accidentally delete it. Now you can use whichever IR loader you like to load the corrective response but I particularly recommend M-Convolution EZ from the Melder Free plugin bundle. It's simple, it supports stereo and normalization on default settings, and seems relatively resource light. Now, I would normally put this kind of corrective processing on my Reaper monitoring effects chain, because that way it doesn't affect my renders and so on, but since I've already got them on there for both my sets of headphones, I'll disable the ones on there, and create a new one on the master for the purposes of this tutorial. So the only trick to M Convolution EZ is it opens up in a mode where you can use built-in IRs like the ones that you would use for reverbs and so on. To switch it to use an IR file you supply, you just need to press the custom path button near the bottom. Then you can navigate to where you saved your downloaded IR file. So obviously, unless you happen to be listening on the same headphones as me, demoing how it sounds won't mean that much. Still. I'll do a run through to give you an idea that although the difference is a bit subtle, it's important. wraps it up for how to adjust the headphone frequency response to be more ideal with free plugins and resources. Let me know your thoughts or what you found to help with headphone mixing and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.